We're sitting here in the New Galileo's Pavilion building at Johnson County Community College in the lounge between the two classrooms. And we're here to talk to you about the history of this building, why it was built, and some of the design features that make this a unique building and a real opportunity for both this campus, uh, the community, and our students. The genesis of the Galileo's Pavilion project actually begins several years ago with uh, students uh, and faculty from a variety of areas talking about the desire to have a model green building on this campus. That idea was revived a little over a year ago by students on the Student Sustainability Committee here at Johnson County Community College. Uh, those students really were interested in investing uh, some of the dollars of the Sustainability Initiatives Fund into such a project because they believed it was really important for a campus like this to have a place where technologies could be on display in which students could learn about renewable energy could learn about energy efficiency and learn about what cutting edge high performance buildings look like in an age in which sustainability and green building are going to be increasingly important. So to that end, uh, the staff of the Center for Sustainability were charged by that student group to go out and try to figure out how to make this happen. And in that process, in that search, we encountered uh, Studio 804 which is a uh, master's program in architecture at the University of Kansas, which does design build work. The idea behind that program is to have architecture students actually feel the, the tactile sensations of having to build projects, not just design them. And Studio 804 has a long-standing reputation for doing cutting-edge green building. Uh, they're perhaps best known for doing the 547 Art Center in Greensburg, which was a lead platinum building, in fact, the first lead platinum building in the state. And it was built there, of course, after the tornado, which devastated Greensburg back in 2007. Uh, our students on the Student Sustainability Committee took that idea forward, and we were able to uh, convince the board, as well as, of course, Dr. Terry Calloway, that this was a project worth pursuing and that it would be a, a real addition to Johnson County Community College. To me, one of the most interesting things about the origins of this project is that it was really conceived by students it was partially funded by students, and of course, it was built by students. Uh, in exploring uh, potential sites on JCCC's campus for um, this new green building, we knew that we wanted something that would be south-facing so that we could maximize uh, the potential of the sun's energy, as well as centrally located so that it could be accessed by students across campus, regardless of whether they were taking classes in here or not. The site where it now stands was the most ideal site for both of these elements. The only thing on the site at the time was a sculpture called Galileo's Garden um, that is owned by the Nerman Museum of Art here on campus. In, in the middle of negotiation of deciding whether the sculpture would be moved or whether the building could be on site with the sculpture, the Studio 804 students took it upon themselves to design the building with the sculpture in mind, actually placing the sculpture in the courtyard, seeing this excellent synergy between the sculpture's use of the sun, tracing the path of the sun through the sky in a year, and the building's use of the sun for energy and light. Once design work was complete, including the integration of the Galileo's Garden sculpture into the overall design of the building, uh, construction began in January of 2012. The actual construction happened rather rapidly, partially of course because of the, st uh, the schedule of the Studio 804 students who were trying to get done as close to graduation uh, as possible. So the Studio 804 students were able to do a, uh, a great deal in a relatively short amount of time. And, and all in all, things went rather quickly. The dedication of Galileo's Pavilion took place on the summer solstice in uh, June of 2012. At that uh, event, dignitaries from both KU and Johnson County Community College talked about the importance of the building and the importance of the educational opportunities for both Johnson County students and University of Kansas students and uh, it was well attended by members of the public and uh, people were able to tour the building and get a real sense as to why this project uh, matters for the college. During the design process, incorporating the sculpture into the courtyard of the building, the staff at the Nerman Museum of Art were able to locate original drawings by artist Dale Eldred showing the sculpture in a square formation rather than the rectangle formation it had been placed in on the current site. Therefore, it was able to be reinstalled in, with more of the original intention of the artist here in the courtyard of Galileo's Pavilion. One of the most visible sustainable features of the building is its use of reclaimed materials. On the exterior of the building, the slate is reclaimed from 
old chalkboards from schoolhouses across the Midwest. And the glass that is used in the south facing windows is reclaimed from the West End project uh, that was going up on the Kansas City Plaza and was not completed. In fact, the architects designed the windows to fit the glass once they were able to locate that material. One of the most compelling features of the building are the green walls that are in each of the three rooms. The green walls serve to um, add a benefit to air quality as well as incorporate the natural environment into the building. The green walls are irrigated by rainwater that is captured off the roof and stored in a 1700 gallon cistern behind the building. That water also supplies the flush valves in the restrooms. Another distinctive feature of the building is the 2.4 kilowatt wind turbine that provides electricity to the building. Electricity is also generated by 44 solar panels on the roof. The building is grid tied, which means it is tied into the electric grid of the college. And when the building is producing more energy than it's actually using at a given time, that electricity will be fed back into the grid and JCCC will be credited for that alternative energy production. The roof of the building contains a number of sustainable elements. The 44 solar panels provide electricity to the building, and around the perimeter of the roof, there are green roof trays. These green roof trays containing native plants will help to mitigate stormwater runoff, as well as help to keep the building cool. The rest of the roof is white, which will reflect light away from the building and help to mitigate the heat island effect. The landscaping of the site contains a rain garden, which will catch stormwater runoff from the site and filter out pollutants. LED lighting is located within the building's lounge and vestibules. LED lighting is a very efficient source of lighting using 50% less energy, lasting six times as long, and the light also doesn't produce heat. The building also incorporates the use of passive solar energy. This is done through daylighting on the south facing windows, as well as capturing the sun's energy for heat in the winter through, through the use of the thermal mass in the concrete floors. The frosted louvers on the windows will serve to maximize this potential, shading from the sun in the summer and allowing more of the sun's light and heat in in the winter. The angle of the louvers is very specifically calculated based on this region in order to maximize the sun's energy and light both in the winter and in the summer. I'm fortunate enough to teach a class here in Galileo's Pavilion that can personally attest as to how students have positively responded to this building. Uh, the classrooms have a very comforting feel about them. The green walls provide a kind of biophilic response on the part of students where they feel comfortable, uh, that the sound of the water trickling down the green walls uh, it provides a soothing atmosphere, and the green walls themselves add a great deal in terms of the air quality of the, of the building. And so for those of us who teach in this building, the building is well to, uh, on its way to fulfilling the intentions of the students who both wanted the project and the students who helped build the project. While they're here, they are learning about both actively and passively about what high performance buildings really can be. And they will leave this building wondering why other buildings don't have some of the features that this particular building does. And so in that sense, Galileo's Pavilion is perhaps the crowning jewel in Johnson County Community College's green building portfolio. Galileo's Pavilion was designed to lead platinum standards and the lead certification process is ongoing. The other elements of the green building portfolio here at Johnson County Community College include the Olathe Health Education Center, which was certified lead gold, largely due to its innovative geothermal system and the ongoing uh, under construction culinary academy which will be lead silver once completed. These buildings collectively give our students a broad variety of experiences in high performance buildings, both utilitarian and in the case of Galileo's Pavilion, a real showcase. This demonstrates the commitment of the college to trying to lead the way both in terms of education about sustainability in high performance buildings, but also walking that talk.